All right, so let's uh, think about this engineering disaster that took place this week with the exploratory submersible that went to the Titanic wreck site and was crushed by the water pressure. Not only was the vessel itself crushed, but the people that were inside of it as well, which is a pretty terrifying idea, but uh, it's, it's clearly appears to be what happened. So we're going to think about this in terms of some familiar objects, particularly aluminum cans. We got here a can of beer. It is full and closed and shake it up and try to get some pressure build up in there. But basically you could see that it's hard because the carbon dioxide inside of there is pushing outwards, trying to escape. And it's putting force on the can relative to the atmosphere. So there's a higher pressure inside of this can. And the can really, these cans, despite how thin they are, are very good at withstanding internal pressure. That aluminum is like paper thin. And you can drop and shake these cans up. And it's amazing how, how good they are at holding the, the pressure. Right? What we have to realize, though, about that submersible is... It was also a pressure vessel, but it worked in the opposite direction. So instead of the higher pressure being inside the vessel, the higher pressure was on the outside of the vessel. Okay, so the water pressure was pushing inwards. It's like me trying to squeeze this thing. And the, and the difference in pressure was extreme, like almost 6,000 pounds per square inch. Okay. That is an enormous amount of pressure. So a scuba uh, air tank for scuba diving, I think they're about 4,500 pounds per square inch or something like that. So if you had a scuba tank down at that depth and you, and you jammed a, a, a drill bit through it, the water would actually go into the scuba tank, not the opposite situation of the air coming out. That's how high the pressure was or is down at that location. So we got here is I'm going to kind of show how possibly an engineering failure can happen with a vessel like this. So we got here a perfectly, a perfect aluminum can that I just opened and emptied. So this thing has not been squeezed and it doesn't have any real visible defects, significant defects in the aluminum. Whereas this one has had a lot of squeezes and stuff done to it. You can see there's a little bit of a wrinkle in the metal right there. That would represent a defect in the wall of the pressure vessel, some place where stress has effectively um, occurred and it's not flat anymore. So I'm going to take this can and um, try to put some force on it. So I'll be, we'll go get the bathroom scale, we'll put the can on the bathroom scale, and then I'm going to stand on it and we're going to see what happens. All right, so we have a scale with a um, units of pounds. So we've got this aluminum can, and I'm going to start applying force to it and hopefully don't break anything. This is a good pressure vessel that doesn't have many defects in the skin. So I have 150 pounds of body weight here. Make sure we get a good footing on this. Oop. So that was about 120 pounds of force before it failed. Okay. Let's get the defective pressure vessel, the one that's been down to the Titanic site too many times. Yeah, that you could hear it failing, starting to fail at right around 60 pounds. So Basically, what I'm trying to show here is that thing was down to that depth multiple times, and the belief is that it developed defects due to that extreme pressure every time it went down. So effectively, that tells you that it was not, it was not uh, engineered enough for that many uses. Um, at either it was not thick enough, or they just shouldn't have used it that many times, one or the other. So what we have to realize is the top of these cans, this is about 4.9 square inches of surface area on the top of here. Now it's not going to be evenly 
distributed because this is not perfectly flat. But let's just say that, you know, assume that it is. <clears throat> um, the weight of my whole body weight, if I put it on there, is uh, 150 pounds divided by 4.9 square inches gives you a pressure of 31 pounds per square inch. So it didn't even take 31 PSI to crush these cans. All right. The depth of the Titanic wreck, water pressure is about 6,000 pounds per square inch. Every, every two feet or so you go, it's actually 28 inches, that you go down in water, in a column of water, it doesn't matter whether it's your pool or the ocean, you encounter a pressure, hydrostatic pressure, of one pound per square inch. So about 13,000 feet, you're going to get about 6,000 PSI. And if you have the surface area, 4.9 square inches, multiply the pound per square inch by the number of square inches, it gives you the force that that surface area experiences. Okay, let's just envision that this is the hemispherical head of the um, front of the submersible, okay, where the window was there. And this one is actually representative of that because the pressure is pushing into the hemisphere like this, both in this can and in the submersible, that hemisphere was domed outwards and the water pressure was pushing into it. So basically what that tells you here is that each square inch of this, um, if there's 31 pounds of pressure in there, it's gonna be about 150, p or 150 pounds of force total on, on that head. If this was the submersible and this was the head, the force would be 29,400 pounds. This actual, two, this object right here, if we sent this down to that depth, this, this surface area that you see in this actual size would have a force on it of 15 tons. You can imagine why this is such a problem. 15 tons of weight on something this size. So scale that up to the size of this that, that, of that actual craft, watercraft and you can imagine the amount of force. It's something that's beyond the engineering that, that we really ever do on a regular basis. Um, the only thing I have that could potentially approximate this kind of pressure is the hydraulic jack. So I have a two ton hydraulic jack. So that means that I can lift an object with this that weighs two tons or 4,000 pounds. Basically that means that the pressure on this little tip, which has a surface area of 0 0.44 square inches, I could approximate a pressure of 9,000 PSI with this jack. It could crush pretty much most common household objects with no difficulty, um, you know, especially if it's a hollow cylinder. Okay, so I crushed that, the cans here with my body weight, and you saw how fast they, they crushed. Now, if this can was experiencing a pressure of 29,400 pounds of force on this end, that's like my body weight times 196 stacked on top of this can. So clearly, the whole incident was extremely violent and extremely quick in its... Uh, and what it did. But this will definitely be written about in engineering textbooks in the future as to um, what not to do. And that's pretty much it.